So the nominees for the 2021 Game Awards has been revealed. And I was taking a look at the list the, uh, the other day. And the, uh, the list is actually one of the better lists that I've seen over the last, well, over the last several years, to be honest. Now, this has been a different year. Um, it's been a very abnormal year for video games. Um, and that's because of all the delays that we've had. Now, there's always delays each year in the gaming industry. But this year was different because we just have come off of, you know, this major pandemic with the coronavirus, uh, which affected the industry on a, on a wide scale. So there were a lot of games that were supposed to come out this year that didn't come out this year and have been pushed back, some of them multiple times. Certain games that come to mind would be uh, Elden Ring, uh, Dying Light 2, that's been delayed a few times. Scrolling down the list, Horizon Forbidden West originally was supposed to come out this year, um, but they pushed it back. You have Evil Dead right there. Just so, so many different titles that have been pushed back that originally were supposed to come out uh, earlier this year. I think Ghostwire Tokyo was pushed back. So many different games. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy and Gotham Knights were both delayed right at the beginning of the year. They were pushed back an entire year. So, so many different games. Scorn, that was delayed a few times. So, because we've had all these delays, it's narrowed the list as far as the nominees go. So, taking a look at um, some some of the, the major awards. You have the top award, the game of the year. The games listed is uh, Deathloop uh, by Arcane Studios and Bethesda. It Takes Two, which I believe is, um, is an indie game. Uh, Metroid Dread from Nintendo and Mercury Steam. Uh, Psychonauts 2 um, by Double Fine and Xbox. Um, Ratchet and Clank by Insomniac and Sony and Resident Evil Village by Capcom. Now, I take a look at this uh, Game of the Year uh, list, and if I compare it to some of the uh, some of the other Game of the Year lists that we've uh, that we've had over the last several years, this is a better list. But I guarantee, if some of these games had come out this year, uh, games like Horizon Forbidden West, games like um, Elden Ring, games like probably God of War, Shadow Warrior 3, Scorn. If some of these games had come out th this year, earlier this year, this game of the year list would look a lot different. I guarantee Resident Evil Village wouldn't be up on that list if some of, the, if some of those other games that I just mentioned came out this year. Ratchet and Clank wouldn't be on that list. Metroid Dread wouldn't be on that list. Psychonauts 2 would probably still be there, Deathloop would probably still be there, but yeah, for the most part, the, the nominee list has been narrowed um, by a great degree thanks to the pandemic. Um, as far as which game deserves it in this, uh, this category, I obviously have not played all of these games here. Um, I don't even own a Switch, so I can't play Metroid Dread. I don't have a PlayStation 5, so I didn't play Ratchet & Clank. Uh, Rift Apart, which sucks because I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan, but I didn't play that. Um, it Takes Two. I saw some gameplay for it, but it's not really my thing. Um, I, I'm not a big indie person. Uh, Psychonauts 2, uh, I got about halfway through that, and then I just basically got sick of it. Or I started to get sick of it, so I just put it down. Uh, Deathloop, I did finish. Resident Evil Village, I did finish. Out of the games I played, I think Resident Evil Village deserves it the most. Um, Deathloop was good, but it's not Game of the Year worthy. But then again, I could say the same about Resident Evil Village. Ratchet & Clank, I'm sure, is great, but it's just another Ratchet & Clank game. Um, I don't think there's anything in particular that's special about that game, that's unique about that game. 
it's a weak contender list, but I think it's it's better than some of the some of the contender lists that we've had um, in recent years. To be completely honest, I don't think any game listed here deserves game of the year. The most unique game on the list is Psychonauts 2, and that's still that's still not up the snuff for a, for a game of the year um, for a game of the year win. As far as which game is going to win, uh, obviously it's going to be Deathloop. There's no way it's not going to be Deathloop. Uh, Deathloop has been uh, this critical darling for some reason this year. I'm not really sure uh, why gaming journalists have a hard on for Deathloop. Like I said, Deathloop was a good game. Um, I enjoyed it. I played it on PC uh, with the DualSense controller, um, and I had an amazing experience, but it's not, it's not all that. Good, but not great. As far as uh, best game direction, I would say Deathloop definitely deserves that in that category, for sure. Um, there was a lot of artistic uh, choices that they made that um, made Deathloop stand out. And so I think um, it deserves, at least deserves that. As far as narrative goes, best narrative, uh, I gotta scroll back up. Yeah, as far as best, best narrative goes, Guardians of the Galaxy should take that one. Easy. Just the banter with, you know, with the characters um, throughout the game and the overall story itself was, was actually pretty, pretty damn good. So I think it, it deserves, uh, it deserves that win. Deathloop will probably take it, although Deathloop didn't have a good ending. The ending just fell flat. There wasn't really anything to it. And uh, the story was pretty straightforward. There was really nothing um, that stood out too much about the, the story with Deathloop. And then the rest of these is like, whatever. As far as art direction goes, that should either go to Psychonauts 2 or Kenna Bridge of Spirits. I think um, it should go to Kenna Bridge of Spirits, um, in all honesty. They have some good uh, contenders for this uh, category, but yeah, that, that, that's my thoughts on, on that. Um, as far as uh, music, uh, best score and best music, uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, easy. Easily. I could also see them giving it the Cyberpunk 2077, but, you know, I don't think that game deserves anything, but, you know, the composers didn't have anything to do with the, the terrible release of, um, you know, the shady release of that game. So if it wins, if Cyberpunk were to win for anything, I, I'd say it deserves it for music, but um, overall, I would say Guardians of the Galaxy um, should take that. Um, as far as best audio design, that's a that's a tough one. I'm gonna say Resident Evil Village uh, for that one. I didn't play uh, Forza Horizon 5, Ratchet and Clank, or Returnal. Out of the the games that I have played, um, Resident Evil um, did a great job with um, you know the the sounds of like the the weapons and um, the environment, the uh, the the monsters, the zombies, um, you know, the boss characters. Yeah, so Capcom did a great job as far as that goes. As far as best performance goes, uh, you have some very strong contenders here. I see Giancarlo Esposito as uh, Anton uh, Castillo from Far Cry 6, uh, Maggie Robertson as Lady Dimitrescu in Resident Evil Village. It should go to uh, this particular category should go to uh, JC, Jason Kelly as Colt in uh, Deathloop. Um, if he doesn't win it, then they should give it to uh, uh, Zoima Akaga um, as uh, Juliana Blake um, from the same game. One of, one of the two should should take it, but um, Colt was far more prominent considering he's the, 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 the only playable character in Deathloop, or at least the primary character, uh, playable character in Deathloop, so... I think he should take that one. As far as some of these uh, these other categories, uh, from that point on, it's nothing but a bunch of nonsense. Uh, best ongoing, best indie, best mobile, best community support, best, you know, uh, VR, 
is a bunch of nonsense. So the other categories really don't matter that much. As far as best action game goes, they'll probably give it the Returnal, although I don't think Returnal deserves anything either. Far Cry 6, I don't think uh, Far Cry 6 deserves anything. They, I think they should give it to uh, Deathloop as far as that goes um, from that category. Best action adventure, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, easy, easily. Um, deserves that over anything else listed here. As far as best RPG, I don't know why the hell Cyberpunk 2077 is listed. This is part of what I'm talking about, that, uh, you know, the, these these uh, games, you know, the, these games awards, the, the way they choose which games deserve nods um, for specific categories is just absurd. Cyberpunk 2077 was a disaster. It doesn't deserve any nod as far as you know winning anything other than the you know the score as far as anything else listed here um rpgs have been pretty pretty weak this year uh scarlet nexus was a bunch of bullshit i completely skipped that game after playing the the demo which was shit yeah so that that doesn't deserve anything monster hunter rise is just another monster hunter game Shin Megami Tensei 5, I have really nothing to say about that. Tales of Arise should, should take that. I think there are those who feel that Tales of Arise was snuffed as far as a, a nod for Game of the Year, but honestly, Tales of Arise, from the few hours that I've played it, it's, it's good, for sure. I think it's a great RPG, but it's not, it's not really doing anything special in particular. And it's not... Persona 5. It's not that game that took uh, JRPGs to the next level. It's not a game that really had anything in particular to say as far as themes go. So it's it doesn't really deserve anything but a nod for best RPG this year. Uh, as far as best fighting game, this category is a fucking joke right here. I don't even know why they keep this, this category every single year. Demon Slayer? Really? Seriously, this this is a joke. You know they they have to be joking because uh, that game was was nonsense, uh, and and it was casual. I don't even know how a game like that could be nominated for for best best anything. That's that's the equivalent of uh, nominating Jump Force. What year did Jump Force come out? What was it? Uh, 20, 2019 or some shit? Yeah, that's the uh, that's the equivalent of that. And then the rest of these is a joke. Uh, Melt, Melty Blood, I don't even know what the hell that is. Uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl? Yeah, okay. Uh, Virtual Fighter 5? Come on. Uh, Guilty Gear is going to win that. And Guilty Gear is, is niche within of itself. So, like I said, that entire category is a joke. As far as uh, racing games, I'm pretty sure uh, our best sports racing, they've combined the category in the one which is funny forza horizon 5 is going to win that i'm sure i've been reading that uh forza horizon 5 is like the highest rated game that's come out this year and uh it was snuffed for a game of the year nod and the reason for that is because they never nominate racing games for game of the year i mean is that really a surprise i mean there's nothing really special in particular about racing sims I particularly don't play racing myself because um, I think the, that entire genre is just ridiculous. And as far as best multiplayer game, I mean, I really have nothing to say for that category. Maybe Knockout City. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say about that. And then it's just uh, the rest is bullshit. Uh, scrolling through the comments here on, uh, on VG Charts. So th this person, this person is saying uh, Forza, Forza Horizon was just whatever. Um, in their opinion, Scarlet Nexus deserves a spot over Ratchet and Clank, which is bullshit, complete bullshit. Better characters in a longer game, yeah, you're full of shit. And he says, uh, Returnal, Returnal is his top, top game of the year. Returnal was bullshit. That game was garbage. Is a fucking roguelike that uh that no one really batted an eye towards. It's a game that got a bunch of high scores from these uh these ignorant gaming journalists. 
from all these different publications. And when the game came out, uh, people were bitching that it didn't have a, a save feature and uh, people just ended up dropping it. It didn't particularly sell very well. It was quickly forgotten. I, I'm not taking that person seriously. Then if we keep scrolling down here, and then if I keep scrolling down here, there's there's quite a few people in this comment chain that uh that feel that Returnal and Forza Horizon should have gotten nominations, which is ridiculous. Then we have uh, this fucking moron right here. Isn't this the same? Isn't this the same piece of shit from before? Yep, the same the same dumbass up here. Now he's saying that uh, Spider-Man didn't deserve uh, a Game of the Year nomination back in 2018. Full of shit. Full of shit, my guy. Then we have the same person again. Who is this motherfucker right here? Who is this person? It is literally my game of the generation so far. Motherfucker, we're only one year into the new generation. The, the current generation. The, the PS5, uh, Xbox Series X generation. We're only one year in. There's hardly been any games, new games released. And Returnal is, is not, it, it doesn't deserve anything. Why did you get downvoted? He got downvoted because he's, he's a fucking idiot. That's why he got downvoted. The fuck? Now, I will say this. A lot of people are saying Forza Horizon uh, deserves some kind of uh, nomination for Game of the Year just because it has a, a, what, a 92 on Metacritic. It doesn't matter what a video game has on Metacritic. It really doesn't. Uh, just because a game has uh, a high score on Metacritic doesn't mean it deserves awards. A uh, perfect example would be The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 2 was a piece of shit. And The Last of Us 2 was the most overrated game that came out last year. That game got perfect 10s across the board. And yet its story was trash. It split the fan base down the middle. That game doesn't deserve shit. Forza Horizon's the same way. Just because it, it has a 92 on Metacritic doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean it deserves any nominations. I don't know why anyone takes this guy seriously. This motherfucker, I see this motherfucker on every goddamn gaming website. If I see you on like every every goddamn video game website with the, you know, with the same type of uh, comment being copy and pasted over and over again, you probably need to get off the internet for a little while. Another thing that, that's always been an issue with the Game Awards is not only is the Game Awards influenced by journalists within the industry and gaming journalists are nowhere near credible enough to take seriously as far as opinions go, but you have all of these other uh, awards within the industry that give out their own uh, Game of the Year awards and whatnot, so which one do you really trust it's not like the the film industry where the the top you know the top tier award ceremony is the oscars right the academy awards it's not like that when it comes to the gaming industry ign GameSpot, i think kotaku giant bomb i think playstation trophies has their own awards as well you have so, all these different publications that host their own awards, and they're all different from each other. The Game Awards will, will nominate and award a, a specific game, Game of the Year, but then you'll, you'll go on a different website and they'll give something else Game of the Year. It's like, which one is actually credible? So, as far as um, the nominations go, there's really nothing special or unique about really anything listed here. And as far as the Game of the Year nominations go, going back to uh, that nomination list, again, Deathloop I don't think should win it, but it probably will. I think Psychonauts 2 or uh, Metroid Dread would probably, should probably take it uh, between those two. Yeah, I don't think... Anything else should uh, should win Game of the Year out of uh, this category, other than those two. Out of the games that I've personally played, which is only two in that list, uh, I would prefer Resident Evil Village to take it over Deathloop. But again, I don't think Resident Evil Village deserves Game of the Year either. So, um, basically what I'm saying is, the Game Awards is going to be a bunch of bullshit. 
and no one should take this this awards uh, ceremony seriously. Just treat it for the joke that it actually is and ignore it completely.